Hi everyone, it's Lisa. Thanks for joining me today and welcome to my sewing lair. I want to share with you a quick couple of tips that I hope that you'll find useful. Uh, for those of you who do a lot of template work, I don't do that so much, largely because I have a lot of specialty rulers and um, I can typically cut the sizes that I need. In this particular um, instance, these happen to be 60 degree diamonds. So would I use a template for this? Mm, probably not. I've got 60 degree rulers that I, diamond rulers that I could use that for. But it could be any shape that uh, one would want to use. And I just want to show you a handy way to make a durable non-slip template. And in this, in this particular case, I printed this on paper, but my preferred printout, and I tested it on my copier. I, I have a copier and then I have a regular printer for my work, which I, you know, I do thousands of pages, it seems, um, in a couple of months. But I found that file folder, so if you take a regular file folder, open it up and trim off the tabs, you can run this through. I, I was able to run it through both my copier and I knew it went through my printer. This is even better than using paper. So I'm going to set the paper aside because this technique works for either one of them. But the problem with these, um, it's, you know, it's kind of slick and they can move. And we're, what we're trying to do is to fortify it. And so to fortify it, we're simply going to get a piece of, um, this is medium weight interfacing. I guess you could use lightweight, but I have a ton of this medium weight interfacing. And I learned this trick from making hundreds of face masks. Uh, I followed the fabric patches uh, recommendation. She's a, happens to be a retired nurse, but of adding this interfacing to the outside fabric to allow for um, better filtration rather than than just uh, plain old um, plain fabric, which really doesn't have the uh, a small enough um, diameter to keep harmful particles out. But this this really does, and um, I was happy to use it. So this has um, the non-adhesive side and adhesive side, and what you want to do is you want to take your template. And you want to um, go ahead and uh, cut this to size. And I would just do, I mean, you could cut your, I, I, I think it's better to work with whole sheets. And the other admonition is that if you're, if you're doing this, use an old blade or a rotary cutter that you have just for paper. And I think it's worth the investment of having a rotary cutter that you use just for that purpose. Uh, because it's quick, it's accurate, and you can get them still pretty inexpensively. But all the admonitions for working, working with your good stuff um, still goes. Don't use your good stuff to cut your, you can do it of course for interfacing, but not for these templates. I happen to have a very um, dull blade in this that needed changing and I um, don't mind doing it for this purpose, but I, and I'll probably have some trouble cutting out. But what we're gonna do is take the wrong side, adhesive side of our interfacing to the wrong side of our template. The other admonition I would give you is that you never wanna put your iron on anything that you've printed. And that's simply because this will come onto your iron and you really don't want that. Yes, you can clean it off, but it's a bitch and you don't want to do that. So I am going to um, bring my little, my little cutting. This is a, this is a cork. This is thick cork that I got at the thrift store, never been used. And then I've got my uh, little wool mat that I'm going to put on it. And um, I never use that unprotected. So I am going to put this. This keeps me from having to go to another ironing surface for these videos. So what are we going to do here? 
I'm going to turn this over. And what you want to do is follow your manufacturer's instructions. I'm turned away from you here. You want to follow your manufacturer's instructions for um, how to set this. I've got my iron on a wool setting, and it is better... It is better to work slowly at a lower heat than at high heat because you've got to be careful that you're not curling anything. So I always like to work from the middle. I'm just taking my iron and pressing it. And I'm going to maybe give you a little, just setting it and remove my clamps. These really make durable templates, and you can just put them in a little baggie along with your pattern so that when you're ready to use them again, you already have them. I, again, you, I frequently tell you how much I love these, these little pressing sheets because they really do protect, and they really give you flat blocks because you can just set a hot iron on it and not scorch your material and you're protecting your material from your iron and your iron from any goopy stuff like starch or adhesive okay and then what you want to do is after you've heat set this you just want to check and just make sure that you have uh, good adhesion and now i can see that I don't have good adhesion here because I was chatting and not paying attention. So let's go ahead and work on that. Maybe just set our iron on it. <sighs> My allergies have been so bad. I'm sorry I sound so I sound nasal all the time, but I really sound nasal in the springtime. I live um, outside of Richmond, Virginia. And Richmond is like one of the top five allergy <laughs> places in the whole country. Not a very nice distinction. So this time of year is always a tough time. And I know that I don't suffer alone. And I'm sure many of you are suffering as well. So I feel for you. I feel your pain. I feel your pain. All right. Let's give this a little check. See how we've done? Oh, that feels like it's nicely adhered. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a fortified template. Not that this template isn't good enough already, but it's non-stick. So this will help it lay very flat on your on your fabric. Now, the other tip that I want to give you is that in cutting these templates out, sometimes a minimal ruler such as this one, this is a quilt in a day for flying geese. I, it's one of the first rulers that I bought. And frankly, I don't use this for my flying geese. I use the eight at a time and other, other methods. But what this template excels at is it has very few markings on it and one that you really need, which is this. And my next hack, I'm going to tell you why this red on either side is really important. But that's my next hack. So just stay tuned because it's a good one. So to, um, to do the cutting, I just place this line right on, I line up on the dashed lines, this, and this I know, and again, I'm, using a, a throwaway blade on this. And because it's hard to see through the ruler, that's why if you work with the, <clears throat> if you work with the seam lines, it can give you a, um, it'll give you a really good result. I know y'all are cringing watching me use this. But trust me, this blade was done for. I also tried to, <laughs> I sharpen my knives and I have Japanese sharpening stones and stuff, but 
I haven't really mastered the technique of sharpening a rotary blade, and part of that is probably because I buy cheaper blades and they don't subject themselves very well to sharpening. Almost done. Okay. And your uh, rotary mat would, if you have one, and they're really nice to have, is a easy thing to do here. All right, so this is this is what we have. We have a perfectly executed sturdy template and um, I'm actually just going to use this to cut out interfacing rather than my good fabric. Um, well actually no because I want to show you that it's that it's non-slip so um, well, despite the bullet, I have plenty of this fabric. Okay, so let's say that this is going to be to be white. I would simply um, uh, line up, and you need to pay attention to straight of grain and and things like that. So let me get a ruler, um, a, a better ruler here. I'll be right back. All right, so if you were cutting out a lot of these, uh, one of the things that you may want to do. Uh, there's two there's two options one is I would just um, I've already got this lined up I've got a perfectly straight edge uh, again I would line up my quarter inch line on my template this is probably not going to even make the cut because I have done so many ill things to it and the other thing that you can do is um, if you were cutting a lot of these, you could simply mark, if you wanted to, just make your marks on however you want. Remember, this is in the seam allowance, so you could use a pen. And, you know, I know people use friction pens, but for marking something on the outside, that doesn't really matter. Or you could simply um, line this up line the seam line up and you should not hit any of the inside stuff and that's probably the easier thing to do now if you have a lot of these to make doubling up on your fabric or quadrupling it and using a really sharp knife and that um, a sharp rotary blade rather is um is a really smart option and that's what I did and buying using using your blades and changing them often is a huge time saver so here we go you can see how easy that was so again the template is still intact the um, this bottom area provides great traction and we are um, we've got a perfect 60 degree diamond in the shape for this particular template. And the other thing is, uh, when I talked about these paper templates, what's nice about these paper templates, you could just, you know, cut these out and put them on the pile to be your pile delineator while you use something sturdier for your template. So that's my first hack for you. Now my second hack for you is this. I'm just gonna use my interfacing. And I am going to, I'm basically just going to, you can see this is a curvy line. And for any of you guys making face masks, you know that you had plenty of, cur of, of um, curves. And now I'm going to show you why this ruler is pretty cool. You see this area here? This is where you can take, now I'm gonna to go to a better cutter and a smaller cutter. This, when you're cutting curves, this is your fulcrum point. So look at what you can do. You can, you can place your ruler and always have something to cut against. And then by moving these together and that that red dot or red line to the outside 
really makes this a keen way to do it. I think I'm coming out of, uh, out of view here. And so you can see that you can get super, super um, um, smooth lines with, with this. So again, uh, it's minimally marked, so it's easy to do. And when I and what I did when I had face mask, I put my face mask template down, and then I slid this, you know, underneath. So again, if you are also doing gentle curves in your um, free hand curves, look how beautiful that is. And I think this is a pretty darn cool tip. Let me know what you think. So um, hopefully uh, these are a couple things that might make your quilting life easier. And I appreciate you taking the time to, um, to, to join me and um, see what's cooking in my quilt lair.